The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this valuable Power Retail webinar session brought to you today by Channel Advisor. Thank you all for joining us. I'm Pranik the Governor. I'm the editor of Power Retail, and I'll be introducing our guest speaker very shortly. Before the introduction, some quick housekeeping. Mobile phones, if you could please turn them to silent. I can't ridicule you if it goes off because I won't hear it, but that's besides the point. You probably want to pay attention this afternoon because it's going to be a great session. At the end of today's presentation, we'll have time for questions. You can enter these at any time in the question dialog box on your dashboard, and we'll do our very best to answer as many as we can. We've got a big session ahead this afternoon, so get comfortable. When it comes to eBay shopping, buyers don't want to scroll through hundreds of listings. They want to find the item they're looking for quickly and at the right price, then buy it and get it delivered fast. Are you being overlooked in this competitive channel? To get maximum exposure for your products and boost sales volumes on eBay, you need to take the time to create effective listings based on best practices. And that's exactly what our presenter, Olivera Kayafa, Head of Services Australia at Channel Advisor, will be talking about today, all about the strategic and best practices retailers must look to adopt for optimizing for eBay success. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Olivera Kayafa. Thank you for the warm welcome, Pranita. I really appreciate it. And welcome everyone to this webinar uh, this afternoon. So I'm very excited to be presenting um, the presentation for you, uh, to you and I really hope that I can offer something of value today. So as Pranita um, mentioned, we're discussing optimization for eBay success. Now this is not just about the data itself, it's about what other strategies you can implement to actually um, get your product out there and more visible to eBay buyers. So again, as Pranita said, my name is Olivera Kayafa. I head up the services team here in Australia for Channel Advisor. So today we'll be looking at um, why eBay matters and eBay is our only marketplace here in Australia. So as a as a e-com destination, it is obviously quite an important um, channel to be on if you're not already. Uh, we'll look at five tips to boost visibility and then we'll move on to looking at optimization and some facts around those optimizations as well. So I will just quickly start with an introduction about Channel Advisor before we move any further. Um, so Channel Advisor is a leading provider of cloud-based e-commerce solutions that enable retailers and branded manufacturers to integrate, manage and optimise their merchandise sales across hundreds of online channels including Amazon, Google, eBay, Facebook and more. In actual fact, we have between 80 and 90 marketplaces that we currently pass data through to. Through automation, analytics and optimization, Channel Advisor customers can leverage a single inventory feed to more efficiently list and advertise products online and connect with shoppers to increase sales. So that's a little bit of an introduction of what we do and we are certainly happy to um, discuss any needs that you may have later on. So why eBay? Well, looking at the eBay landscape both internationally and locally, eBay has 25 million active sellers. Over 1 billion listings are live on the eBay marketplace. And if we keep looking at it from a global perspective, there are 326 million eBay app downloads, 164 million active users worldwide, and of the eBay revenue, 58% of that is from the international sites. If we start looking closer to home, 55% of all online shoppers in Australia have bought something on eBay Australia. So that is a significant number of buyers here that are looking on that site and why it is so important. And that really suggests why it's so important that sellers are on eBay. If they're not now, that you get on there as quickly as possible. So if we start looking at the eBay buyer, 75% of shoppers are looking for some sort of deal or promotion. 50% of shoppers use their mobile devices and are more likely to compare prices. And 42% of shoppers want free or discounted shipping. We know here that the eBay buyer is an opportunistic buyer. They are there for a good deal, but they are also there to ensure that they get a good experience. What we also find is, is that eBay buyers are loyal eBay buyers. They will be loyal to eBay, the marketplace, and they will come back time and time again to find the products that they need. So again, 
I will keep harping on about this, but it is imperative to be on this marketplace. So we'll start with some tips, five tips to boost your visibility on eBay. So we'll start with titles. Um, eBay allows up to 80 characters on, uh, for each listing. And it is really strongly recommended that you include as many of the important keywords as possible. Now this includes details such as brand, product name, size and color, if you're selling, selling apparel, for example, or model and key technical details if it's something outside of that category. If you find that you're struggling to fill those fields and that you'd like a bit of inspiration, utilize something like the Google AdWords uh, Keywords tool to give you some keyword recommendations. What we find is, is that if an item is converting on your website, um, it is likely to also convert on eBay as well. So those keywords can be a very good guide to what will work well. Now, as an example, if you look at this uh, orange uh, field below, this would be how a title should be built out for an apparel um, item. So a brand, a gender, a type, a style, a size, a color, and a condition. Now, eBay will sometimes make the recommendation that you put the condition at the start of the title. Um, lately, they've really been encouraging this as a, as a means of, of action. They believe that it, it ensures that buyers understand that what they're buying is brand new. They are really actively moving away from the idea that eBay is an auction secondhand marketplace. This is a, a department store style marketplace now, and it is important to make sure that your product does look the part. I'm sorry everyone, I'm just having a bit of a technical glitch here. Going yeah. Okay. Sorry about that. So next we'll look at subtitles. Don't overlook subtitles. Um, it's important to think about where they may have a place in your listings. So a subtitle allows an additional 55 characters per listing. Um, and what it's really um, used for most often is to, to have a call to action to, to buy, to contain a call to action. So if you look at the example at the bottom of the page, you can see that first and foremost, this retailer is stating the fact that they are the official RB store, that this is the official um, manufacturer of the Finnish um, Power Ball um, dishwashing tablets. Um, and so they're trying to instill trust in the buyer and that they will get a quality product that is from the manufacturer. And then they also have a second call out suggesting that they're offering free shipping on orders over $69. So that one's actually working um, in a two-pronged approach and it's actually um, quite a good subtitle. Now, it's just important to remember that subtitles cost uh, have a $2 fee per listing, um, and that applies if it's good till cancelled listing, that will apply every 30 days. So we suggest using it sparingly, but where you believe you will get the most value. Uh, usually it would be when you're uh, battling to get some visibility in a category that is very heavily um, populated, and you want to be able to have your listing stand out amongst the competitors. Getting your product details right. So for, first and foremost, eBay has had a very significant push towards the use of product identifiers over the past couple of years. Um, and this would include things such as brand or your MPN or global trade item numbers such as UPCs or your EANs or ISBNs. Now, you can still sell without these product identifiers. However, what it does, it, there is certainly some benefits to providing uh, these values, um, particularly if that product that you're selling already exists in eBay's catalog, additional information will be provided back on your listing for buyers to see. So they may have already collected data from the manufacturer that sits in their eBay catalog and it, returns a, it can return a great deal of information. So it's definitely worthwhile trying to take advantage of that. Um, and eBay is, is 
it's still pushing quite heavily for, for retailers to ensure that they're using these product identifiers. Item specifics. Now, this item specifics are used in two different areas on eBay. So I'll, I'll look at the two different areas in particular. So on the right hand side, you'll see um, a eBay filter on a search results page that you would see in any normal um, search that you, you perform on eBay. And so in this particular example, I have searched for a uh, men's t-shirt and you can see that the default item specifics for eBay are brand, style, color, size, sleeve length, material and theme. So these are all values that eBay, um, or categories, sorry, that eBay utilizes as, utilizes as filters. And the important mechanism behind these is to try and help buyers find your product more clearly um, and in a much smaller group of listings than if they were just to type something into the search results field. Now we'll put a caveat on that and say that the search um, search field is still the most commonly used mechanism for searching on eBay, but the filters then come second to that and are utilised by many buyers after they've done the initial search. Now, if I bring your attention to the uh, style section, you'll see that the Raglan T-shirt only has 3,455 listings, whereas the Basic T has 79,000. Now, I'm sure if I clicked on See All and I went to Other or some sort of undefined category, there would be quite a lot of T-shirts in there. So by the time I select a colour and I might be able to select a brand and a size, that 3,000 might come down to 100 listings. And you can see already how your listing will appear on the first results page rather than further down the track if you're doing everything else well. So just using item specifics in this way certainly do help buyers get some additional visibility and it helps to eliminate the other sellers that aren't really meeting the buyer's search needs. Now, if we also look at how else item specific, specifics are utilised on eBay, you can see the box below and this is pretty common. Anyone that shops on eBay would have an idea of what this item specific field looks like on eBay. The more detail you have in there, the better. The easier it is for your buyer to make a decision as to whether this product meets their needs and their requirements or not. Um, if you have less in there, the buyer then needs to go to the description and, and search through the description and if you've got a really long and complicated description, you might lose their attention. And so utilising item specifics as well as, as clear descriptions is the best way to get buyers to your product and making a conversion. Image is everything. So eBay allows up to 12 free picks for every listing. Um, and it's really important to take clear images, close-ups, with lots of angles to present to the buyer. They can't touch and feel that product. So the next best, best option is, is to give them the opportunity to feel as if they can touch and feel that product. So that they believe that what they're buying is actually what they want. So we really encourage that wherever possible. If, if you're listing multiple multivariant listings where the variant is based on colour or some sort of other physical difference on that item, then it is imperative that you provide an image for each colour or each variant. If it's just a size variant, that in itself obviously does not require a, a unique image for each, but for a colour or a different um, product, it is definitely important to make sure that the buyer gets to see what it is that they're, they're buying. Use high resolution photos. Now, eBay suggests up to 1,600 pixels on, uh, on the longest side, but we find that most retailers sort of don't quite get there. Um, the bare minimum is 500 pixels on the longest side of an image. So outside of that, you may get your listing up, but then after a while, eBay will pick up the fact that it doesn't meet the requirements. So it is imperative that the image is at least 500 pixels on the longest side. Um, getting it up to 1600 pixels would be great, but Google's recommendation, if you look at my little table there on the right hand side, is 800 pixels on the longest side. 
And so for the purposes of getting product advertised by eBay, eBay on Google, um, having a slightly larger image is always advantageous. And then finally, consider your mobile viewers by cropping photos tightly. And we'll discuss mobile as a mechanism for purchase a little bit later. But the better your images, in terms of cropping and tight editing, the better that your buyers will be able to see the product on a mobile device. Describe in detail. So the description is still an extremely valuable tool for creating search engine friendly listings. Um, provide as much detail as possible. So in the past, providing as much detail as possible meant having a really long listing with a million pictures and lots of black and red and blue fields and everything was just, it was a very intense experience and you could scroll forever to get to the, the detail that you wanted to see. And that's really not the way that eBay is encouraging um, sellers to go anymore. And you know, it's been that way for quite some time. It's important that you include all the details, such as size, such as shape, such as color. It's also important to include detail about packaging and what's included in the in the item with the item. Um, it's important to include details around returns policy and shipping options um, for local and international customers. People will see the buyers will see at the top of your listing what the handling time or the, the expected ship date is or the expected delivery date is, and they'll see what the returns. Um, policy is, but sometimes adding that little bit of extra detail in your description goes a long way to instilling the, the confidence in the buyer that they are buying from a reputable seller. Now, also having very complete sentences and correct grammar and spelling is incredibly important. Um, you know, historically eBay, you know, you, you'd come onto a listing and things would look a bit messy, but it was okay because you were getting a good deal. It's becoming less and less like that. People really want a professional experience on eBay. And then finally, break up your description by using formatting tools. So, you know, include headlines, bulleted lists and any other visual elements that do help. Um, later on in this presentation, I will discuss active content um, and the changes that are coming up. But it is important to have nicely structured listings that are clear, um, are simple to read and provide all the relevant detail and that just aren't too long. So we'll start talking about optimization of facts and things that are outside of just the normal data that we're just discussing. So we'll start with shipping. Um, so eBay tells us that fast and free leads to an 11% increase in sales and that's quite a significant number. You can sort of see why when you look at the image on the left because the the listing that has free postage stands out and it will stand out amongst listings that don't offer free postage. In our experience, what we find is that even if a, buy, a seller has built the shipping cost into the price of the item and has offered free postage, that they will see a better return on sales than if they would have a lower price with a shipping um, cost associated. So it may be different for some sellers, but that's the general experience that we have. When you go to the actual listing itself, you'll see the call out for fast and free. And this may be enough to convince the buyer that you're the better seller to go with than um, the other seller that's going to take a few more days to get it there. Or yeah, their price is a bit cheaper, but the shipping cost is, is associated. So fast and free is definitely something that we recommend. We know that not all sellers can um, utilize the fast and free um, option, but if you can, it's definitely something that would be worthwhile at least using on some of your range. It doesn't have to apply to all of your range. Setting a promotional shipping discount on eBay also helps to increase basket size. Um, and eBay offers quite good call outs on the listing page to identify that there is a promotional shipping discount on offer. So in this particular instance, Target is offering free delivery on orders over $80 when two or more items are purchased. What we always recommend to our sellers is that you look at your average order value. So you make sure you've got a clear understanding of what your average order value is. And then set a promotional shipping discount at a slightly higher value. That's enough to incentivize someone to add one more item or two more items to the basket 
you really want to just, I suppose, get as many purchases out of that buyer as possible. And if and we do see that promotional shipping does assist with many retailers. If you happen to have top rated seller status, you can uh, try and work towards getting the premium badge by adding one free and one express shipping option. It does help you to rank better when you offer these two. Even without having a premium badge, offering an express shipping option does influence the eBay best match algorithm. So either way, um, if you can offer express shipping, do so. And if you happen to be able to be eligible for eBay premium service and the eBay premium badge, you can see what would appear here on your listing, this little um, little uh, image here. Enabling out of stock control to retain your eBay item ID and visible sales history. So it's really easy to set this up. It's in, uh, something that you just switch on uh, under site preferences. It's actually the first option that comes up in site preferences. So the, the two main advantages are, as I said, to retain your eBay item ID um, and to retain your visible sales history. If your product is seasonal and you know that you won't be replacing that, then out of stock is unlikely to be as advantageous. However, if you've got product that you will be replenishing, then we always recommend out of stock control be enabled. And as you can see in the image here, it shows how many of that item have been purchased in the past by other buyers. So it instills a sense of, um, of confidence in the buyer that they are buying from someone reputable, that the item that has been purchased is as stated and that people are relatively happy or are happy with that particular item. Now, it is important to mention that even though out of stock control is on, um, eBay will suppress that listing whilst it is out of stock because they don't really want buyers seeing listings that are out of stock. There's really no advantage to that. And they will pull the listing after 90 days if there has not been a quantity update within that period of time. Also to note is that the sales history um, that influences best match only counts as the past 14 days. So this out of stock functionality doesn't really necessarily help speed that algorithm unless there's been a quantity update and a sale in the past 14 days. So just bear that in mind. Some other um, facts to have a look at are titles with 60 plus characters sell 1.5 times better. Um, images, larger images, particularly those with 1600 pixels on the longer side tend to have a lower return rate. Um, it really just indicates that buyers you know, are confident that when they're buying because the images are large, the images are clear, they may have multiple images with multiple angles and they then feel confident in what they've bought and are less likely to return. List all products, not only a selection. And this is something that we constantly and always will um, advise our customers here. Add everything. If it's not selling well in, in your store and it's not selling well on your website, it doesn't mean it won't sell well on eBay. eBay is a different marketplace. It, people may find, a, there may be a demand there. People might find something that they're looking for um, and they didn't think to look at your website so or didn't think to go into your store. So it's certainly um, important not only to clear or exit stock but to also provide a full range that will help bring a bigger audience to your listings and to your store. Use multi-variations to rank better. Um, multi-variations in and of themselves work better in that you are more likely to have a, a more sales on one listing than um, having multiple listings with you know, low numbers of sales. eBay will rank your listing better for a multi-variation, particularly when the sales are higher. Bundling. So bundles help to expand your selection. They also make it easier for buyers to get the bits and pieces that belong together. So for example, if you were selling a mobile phone, you could bundle the mobile phone with a car charger, 240 volt charger, a, um, a phone case, and a screen protector and they've bought it all from you. Other, rather than going in and buying the mobile from you or one of the chargers and then they buy each of the different 
bits and pieces from other uh, res uh, other retailers. So bundling certainly does work, um, and it's something that we do recommend wherever possible. And then add barcodes to enable free traffic by comparison shopping engines. Um, again, as I mentioned before, eBay is one of uh, Google's biggest advertisers. And you will notice when you go on Google searching for product that you will frequently see an eBay listing or multiple eBay listings up on the Google uh, search results pages. So if you want to take part in that and you want free marketing by eBay, then add barcodes and it is more likely that your product will be visible on Google. TerraPeak. So TerraPeak is something that um, you know a lot of retailers have used over the years. We use it internally here as well to do quite a bit of research um, on the market. Um, and though eBay at the start of the year removed competitive research as one of the most important me search mechanisms on TerraPeak, there is still a significant amount of, amount of information to be found on the site. Um, you can still see at a category level or a product level how much a seller is selling. You just don't know who the seller is anymore, but at least you can see that seller A is selling $10,000 a week, seller B is selling about $7,000 a week, and so on and so on. So it's a really strong tool that I always advise my retailers to utilise, particularly when it comes to sourcing product um, and looking at the categories that they want to sell into. Um, and you can even utilise it for forecasting sales and optimising listings. So again, TerraPeak is something that is, is a tool that's invaluable to eBay sellers. Promoted listings. So this is now a very big area of focus for eBay this year. Um, and eBay is very much encouraging retailers, both ours and, and everyone pretty much to utilise um, the functionality. So the advantage of promoted listings, and it really works in a similar mechanism to um, Google AdWords, um, is that you only pay per conversion. So whilst your product is being made more visible, you are only paying if that item actually sells. So that's a really good marketing strategy to employ. Um, what we do say, what we do understand with eBay is that if you do decide to um, make a listing a promoted listing, that your item will uh, show up in about fourth or fifth position on the search results page. And you'll get about 40 ad placements around the site. So this is money, uh, it's just marketing that's for free. If you happen to get a conversion, fantastic. You bid up to, up to anywhere from about 3% up to about 20% of, of your final value fee towards that promoted listing. We are seeing a lot of impressions, and we understand that Google is very, uh, not Google, sorry, eBay is working very strongly to really bring up the conversion rate that we see with promoted listings. But impressions are quite significant for many of our retailers. Promotions Manager as well. So you may have noticed if you've used it in the past that the dashboard has changed over the past few months. Um, eBay has made it a little bit easier to use now. Um, and it's the dashboard is fantastic in showing you the performance of your promotions. Um, there are different promotions available to use. You can see here on this image that promotions is actually classed as a different um, tool to Markdown Manager. Markdown Manager has been around for a very long time and it's a, a tool that many sellers have used um, over time, but it has a couple of little disadvantages. The main one being that if uh, you have a product that is currently on a Markdown Manager promotion, you can't revise that listing. If you send through a revision on that listing, the, the Markdown promotion will actually end on that listing. And if you happen to revise all your listings, your promotion is gone. So Promotions Manager doesn't suffer the same, same problem. Um, and it's a little bit different in how it, how it offers promotions, but they are nonetheless very good. So you've got four different main mechanisms, really three actually, but 
the main ones are order discounts where you can offer, for example, buy a promotion that has, say, five, spend $50 and get 5% off or buy three, get one for free or half price. You can use the accessory discount promo where you could offer a mobile phone and then apply a range of ad accessories at a discounted rate. And they appear just under the, just above the on specifics box so that the buyer doesn't have to go searching for the product. They're already looking at the mobile phone and then eBay has a call to action that says, hey, here's some related accessories. Do you want to buy any of these? And they're really fantastic um, call outs to help encourage the addition of more product to the basket. Coupons or codeless vouchers um, as they're also called um, are also a really good mechanism for um, attracting buyers on either social media or through EDMs. So when you generate the codeless voucher promotion, eBay will generate a uh, URL that you can add to your social media campaigns or to your EDMs. And it really does assist with a customer loyalty and bringing your previous buyers back or to acquire new buyers, which is, you know, always, you're always striving for one of the two. So that codeless voucher option certainly does work well. And then finally, there's a sales events page where you can post all your um, promotions in the one page so that a buyer can come along and go, oh, look, there's a whole bunch of different promotions for this seller. Um, you know, maybe there's something there for me today. So some important um, elements about Promotions Manager and why we recommend um, its use is that the order size and the revenue increases as buyers purchase more items in a transaction, so basket size increases. Um, it encourages buyers to buy more from you because it's highlighting the range of stock that you have available. So the cross promotion is is very strong with these promotions, and um, you know it really we encourage buyers uh, sellers to to just um, test and implement and and to try to see what works for your product range for your categories. Um, what works for one seller doesn't necessarily work for the other, but it's important to keep trying different promotions, just as as you would with a bricks and mortar store where you need to market that store, whether it be in a catalog or um, some sort of TV or radio advertising, you need to do that with eBay. Long gone are the days where you could put a listing on eBay and, and you know it would do really well. Now there's a lot of sellers on eBay, there's a lot of high profile sellers on eBay and you need to stand out amongst the crowd. And so marketing is an absolute must. And then finally, lower postage costs are also, um, we, we're also seeing lower postage costs and an increase in margins because people are bundling orders. So they're not buying one item and then coming back sometime down the track and buying another one. They're buying everything they need at one go and then they'll come back for something else. So it's definitely something um, that really indicates to us that Promotions Manager is, um, is the right way to go. Deals is another area of focus um, and has been for eBay for a long time, but they're really driving um, a very strong deals um, program at the moment. Um, it is quite easy to submit um, items for the deals um, promotions. The facts to bear in mind are that you need to be able to offer a relatively decent discount on that deal, anywhere from about 10 to 20% at least. You need to be able to offer free shipping on that item and you need to be able to offer a fairly decent quantity pool. So at least 50 items, usually around 100, particularly for smaller items that are likely to go quite well. Depending on the placement of your, um, of your item on the deals page, we can see some incredible uplift in sales um, on a, any given day that a deal occurs. So, um, and, and what we find is, is that there's a halo effect against the, uh, a, a, across the whole store in that once buyers have already gone to buy that one item from you, they may find something else. And the baseline of your sales tends to come up for quite some time afterwards. So it's definitely a um, area that we always suggest eBay sellers participate in. Now, as I promised before, um, I just wanted to discuss mobile a little bit. So, currently 48% of Australians are shopping uh, via mobile devices, but on eBay it's actually over 60%, which is 
quite a considerable number of the audience on eBay. Um, if you think about all the mums that are sitting in their cars waiting to pick up their kids at school or or you know people sitting you know between meetings and needing to buy something at the last minute it's it, it is irrefutable how important it is to make sure that your listings are, are mobile optimized and eBay is the number one e-com app in Australia so again responsive design on your listings and good images are incredibly important um, I'll go on to talk to talk about active content shortly, but in terms of the way um, a listing template should look, responsive design is really the only way to go. Um, and if you happen to be a channel advisor customer and are using our default templates, they are designed responsively. Uh, if you currently don't have a um, template that is designed responsively, then get your design team or or get speak to any of the um, part or any of the design companies out there that are familiar with eBay to have a look at your template and make some recommendations or do the design for you. Um, if you if you're making it difficult for buyers to buy on a mobile, you're just not going to convert, and so it, it just cannot be um, sort of suggested strongly enough that responsive design is important. We have a uh, URL here available for you to actually test um, the design of your uh, listings for mobile. Um, and we also use this internally um, to ensure that the listings do look good on a mobile device. Um, and it is very informative. So that's a great little tool that you can um, get access to. Now, just to touch on the golden standard listings checklist. Now, we've already discussed some of these, so I might skip through some of the areas that we've already looked at. So we've already looked at title and images, um, but there are a few um, other elements that I did want to touch upon. Um, for example, if you look at features there, we've got click and collect. So this is the program that eBay runs with Woolworths and Big W, and it allows a buyer to opt to have an item delivered to Woolworths or to their local Woolworths or to their local Big W. A lot of uh, buyers these days can't have um, items sent to their workplace they're, or they're not home during the day and they can't click the item and they don't really have time to go to the post office. Post office is only open from 9 to 12 or 1 on a sad day and they're just not going, going to make it. So this offers them another, another avenue to get their item safely and in a way that they feel confident in buying. So we always recommend the use of click and collect if your products are eligible, of course. So it's more suitable to smaller items. Um, but if you're not using it, uh, have, start having a look at how that might help your business grow. Are you losing buyers that don't want products um, shipped in the shipping with the shipping mechanisms you're currently offering? Strike through pricing as well. So this is something that has opened up considerably for sellers in the um, very recent past. Um, it used to be very hard to get strike through pricing. It is getting easier now. Um, we actively get this implemented for our um, sellers. But if um, you're not with Channel Advisor, we recommend that you either reach out to your account manager or to eBay support to see if they can assist you in getting strike through pricing. It is much better than using the Markdown Manager tool on eBay um, because it doesn't um, it's not impacted by the uh, revisions problem that Markdown Manager suffers from. Um, Categorisation. So it's very important to ensure that your products are categorised correctly. If not, eBay tends to suppress the listings and so you're less likely to find um, your listing if you go searching for it or buyers are less likely to find your product if they go searching for it. So um, you don't want to make it any harder uh, for buyers to find your product. Returns is another area of focus too. So eBay very strongly encourages at very least a 14 day returns policy, um, but they really do love a 30 days returns policy. So if you can offer 30 days, then all the better. And I believe that that does feed the eBay um, best match algorithm as well. Um, the postage rate. So there are now quite a few different mechanisms for offering postage on eBay. 
So flat rate shipping doesn't necessarily work for all sellers. Um, and being able to use the different mechanisms is um, certainly a way to help ensure that you're not losing money on sales wherever possible. So for example, um, if the flat rate shipping uh, option doesn't work and calculated shipping doesn't work either, then you could use the postage rate table that eBay offers. And that postage rate table contains 15 shipping zones around Australia. You can offer a standard shipping rate or a express shipping rate. And you can do, uh, offer the uh, rates based on just a, a, just a stock standard rate per zone. You can do a, a base rate plus a per kilo rate or a base rate plus a surcharge. So there is a couple of different mechanisms there to cope with bigger freight, larger items or um, any products that are causing you some loss on, on, your, um, on your revenue. Customer service. So this is another area too that is in, immensely important for all sellers. eBay is holding sellers more and more accountable to their, um, to their duty to the buyers that are purchasing off them on eBay. If you have a contact number, put it on your listing. If you don't, that's not a problem, but make sure that you're communicating professionally and politely with buyers at all times. Um, it, even now, I, I often see how what impact um, poor customer service has on a retailer's, um, uh, not only their seller level, but also on their sales the um, poor customer service really does have a considerable impact and you can quite easily drop from a top, being a top rated seller down to being a below standard seller um, just on the back of not taking in, uh, the customer service piece seriously enough. It is extremely important. Um, in terms of your service level agreement as well, so it's important to um, call that out on your listing wherever possible, um, you know who who you'll be sending your items out with, or how they might be able to track their items, what what your contact details are, um, all those bits and pieces of information that really do help your buyer find the information they need and who to contact in case of, of any issues. If we look at international selling as well, so um, I don't know how many of you might be aware of this, but you can actually log in to another eBay site with your eBay.com.au credentials. So for example, if you wanted to sell on eBay US directly rather than as an international seller shipping into the US, you could log on to eBay.com with your eBay credentials and start listing directly there. So that's certainly an opportunity that exists for, uh, for sellers um, and something that we always encourage now with a lot of the cross-border trade discussions that have been um, taking place of late. So we definitely um, do um, encourage that you participate in that. Um, make sure your costs are reasonable and that um, you are mindful of details such as international sizing or power requirements, anything that is different for that region, even if it's translation. So there are a few factors to consider, but it's certainly something um, that is worthwhile looking at. So finally, keeping on track. Um, so as I mentioned before, uh, eBay simplified their seller standards as of February 2016. Um, and what no longer counts as a defect is by feedback detailed seller ratings, returns requests that are successfully resolved with your buyer, and items not received requests that are successfully resolved with your buyer. However, now eBay does focus on the areas of seller cancel transactions, so oversell. Um, with our customers, if we're finding that oversell is a problem, we will um, work with them to implement buffers on listings to ensure that um, a listing is uh, pulled or set to out of stock before they actually hit zero. Um, but this is an area to, to very carefully consider. It's, it's a, quite a risky proposition now to, to just sort of hope for the best um, if you oversell. Um, cases that are closed without seller resolution, there is absolutely no reason why you should not be communicating with every customer on every case. eBay is taking this seriously, seriously as well. So 
deal with every case as it comes to hand. That is something that is very important to look at. And the new on-time shipping metric. So that's another area of focus of, for eBay. If you're not getting the product out of your warehouse in the, ha in the handling time frame that you have stated for that listing, eBay will start to penalise your account. Now the mechanism in, uh, with which they decide whether you have or haven't met your handling time is to first check when you deliver the package to the carrier and they scan. If there's no acceptance scan, then they look for a delivery confirmation. If there's no delivery confirmation, then they will check with the buyer and they'll ask them when they got it and if it was okay. And then if the buyer confirms that everything was okay, you're good. If, if the buyer confirms that it came outside of the expected delivery date, then eBay will penalise your account. And the final piece I wanted to, to discuss today was active content. So as of July this year, um, listings must not contain any active content um, in the description field. And, and this came about due to an increased security risk that was identified by eBay um, some time back. So this includes anything such as JavaScript, Splash, plugins and form actions. So um, if you're not currently working with a design company and you need some recommendations, please feel free to reach out and we can certainly assist with that. Uh, um, in the meantime, use the link that we provided before and I'll also bring that up again here um, to check whether your listing contains active content. If it does, you will need to um, very, uh, very quickly consider how you're going to rectify that listing template to make sure it's in line with eBay policy. So just to summarise, get your basics right on your listings with your data. Do the audit of your titles, your subtitles, your images and descriptions and make sure you're utilising items specifics and, and product identifiers. Make use of deal, the deals planner and promoted listings and promotions manager. Keep on track of the latest eBay updates to remain competitive and to remove active content before July 2017. Um, if you did want to speak to one of our representatives, you can email us at ausales at channeladvisor.com. And we've also included a couple of links here to our strategy and support centre with some strategic and industry information that you might find um, of use. Thank you for a very insightful uh, presentation, Oliveira. I certainly learned a lot about optimising for eBay success this afternoon. We've got a few questions lined up. Um, the first one is from Soon. Um, she wants to know, does UPC equal to barcode? She's put all barcode and EAN and complete details on her listing, but it's still not visible on Google and other shopping centres. What step? should she need to take in order to make her listing visible in Google, Yahoo and other shopping centres? Unfortunately, there is no way to control what listings eBay is going to promote on Google. Um, what you can do is ensure that you are utilising all the best practices as we've discussed today. Make sure that you are um, wherever possible the top rated seller. Um, and provide all that information and in at some point it is possible that eBay will utilise your listing but there is no guarantee. It's just a recommendation that we can make. Um, I have seen you know listings from my retailers pop up and it really depends on what the category looks like. So if it's a competitive category, sometimes it is harder. However, if it's not such a competitive category, you will have a much um, better chance of seeing your product on Google. Okay, and um, she's sent a follow-up question through, again from soon. Um, she says she'll be away for a short vac vacation soon. In order to keep best match ranking, should she stop selling on eBay by hiding them or keep selling by putting a vacation notice on her item? Um, it would depend on how long um, soon's going away for. So if it's for longer than two, uh, one to two weeks, I would recommend just putting the store on holiday mode and stop selling. However, if it's not too long a period, then I think it would be safe to uh, enable holiday settings and allow purchases on buy it now item only um, listings to occur and that will help to continue the um, best match health. Fantastic. We've got another question that's come through. Um, why is free shipping uh, on eBay important? So 
for eBay favours listings that have got free shipping and it really does feed the best match algorithm. So it's something that we um, do always uh, encourage sellers to um, offer. What we find in our experience here is, is that those listings not only become more visible because of the best match um, um, influence, but buyers seem to prefer a listing that offers free shipping. So you're really trying to, to work on, on two different levels at that point. And with eBay, the more sales you make, the more sales you're likely to make on that listing. So it feeds itself and it, it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. Okay, uh, we've got another question. Why are multi-variation listings recommended if you have multiple colors and sizes available for one item? So with multi-variation listings, um, what eBay states and what we see um, with our retailers is that it is better to have multiple sales on one listing than it is to have dribs and drabs of sales on many listings on a search results page. So historically, the idea that having many listings on one page works better um, is something that is has been phased out by eBay. Depends which category you speak to. I will have some um, some re uh, uh, retailers that will tell me that you know all their competitors uh, you know uh, putting unique listings um, for every single size and colour um, on on the page. But having all those listings on the page don't necessarily necessarily translate to sales. What we see translates to sales is a good listing that already has sales on it. So. Sales tend to feed sales, as I mentioned before, um, and that's why a multi-variation listing um, works better than just a single listing. Okay. I've got a uh, question that, that just came through from Leo. Um, he says, I understand that Channel Advisor have been working on the removal of dynamic content from its templates for some time. How will the shipping calculators in the dynamic con context work for bulky items? So, for example, sellers currently utilising dynamic fields with the postcode inputs within the body of the listing. So that is something that um, they will need to discuss with their um, designers. It is, I believe, something that will no longer be supported by the active content changes. Um, and it, pretty much most clickable links within the listings will be uh, will no longer be supported. So um, our recommendation is to definitely uh, discuss this with uh, either their designer or with any of the design companies that we can um, certainly make recommendations recommendations to. Okay, um, we've got time for one more question. Um, Richard has sent through a question. Uh, he wants to know if you have any advice for a new seller to get initial sales to improve rating and reputation. So this is this is that golden question of how do you get that hundred feedback and um, turn your business into just a little sort of small seller into something much bigger. Um, what we would usually state is to either throw some heavy promotions to get some activity happening on the account, um, just to try and bring people to the store and get sales happening. You need to get that best match algorithm, algorithm um, favouring your listings. We also, in some cases, um, would suggest that you find what of your product is a hot seller on eBay and treat that as a lost leader. Um, and I know this is sometimes not what sellers want to hear because they don't really want to be giving things away, but it's, to, to build that stature on eBay, it's important to get sales up. And so using a lost leader like you would in any business is something that works um, uh, quite well to help you get your feedback established, to get um, that best match algorithm fed and to just help grow the business. So they're the two main mechanisms and then ensuring that you have all the best practices in place um, as well. Wonderful. Well, um, that's all the time we have uh, for questions this afternoon. Thank you again, Oliveira, for that um, fantastic uh, presentation on optimising for eBay success. And thank you very much, everyone, for joining this insightful and valuable webinar. The video will be available uh, soon online. Please sign up to our newsletter if you haven't already for any upcoming webinars that could be of help to you at powerretail.com.au. I'm signing out now. I hope you have a lovely day today.